Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG, here with another episode of Ask Dave. Today we have a question from Jeff, AC2AU. And uh, he has this uh, um, question. How exactly do I attach radials to a commercial vertical antenna? Love your channel. Thanks, Jeff. Well, uh, usually there will be some instructions uh, that tell you how to do it. However, there are uh, different ways to do it. The uh, antenna, like let's take the um, Butternut HF9V. Okay, that has a tube like this that goes into the ground. Okay, and then there is a plastic piece here, and then the antenna goes up from here. So this is an insulator. This goes into the ground up to about here. Okay, and boy, you better get that vertical. I would suggest you put the whole antenna together, lower it down into the hole, guy it so that it's perfectly vertical and then fill in around here and yes you can put concrete in here if you want now this bottom of the pole is considered the ground this is not a ground rod by the way and this up here is the main antenna and there's a little bolt there and a little bolt there and as it turns out they've got a coil the 80 meter loading coil between the two and you have to stretch and tighten that coil to get it tuned this is ground okay now let me show you something and um, I'll ask Callum to get a, a picture of this off the web or just walk out back and take a picture of mine you've got say 30 radials to connect to that one little screw well obviously you can't connect that to that one little screw so I've used various methods over the years for doing it one is I created a copper wire ring about this big in diameter and I connected a wire from the ring to this and then I connected all my radials out like this. I tried soldering them and I used a uh, you know a simple little uh, blowtorch like you would use for plumbing uh, back when we did plumbing with copper. Um, the problem is it doesn't like to point down very much. Those things like to point up rather than down. And I had a heck of a time soldering these things right here. So I went to a different technique. Well, another thing you could do is lift this up about four feet off the ground, attach all your radials, put it down on the ground, and then attach it to the ground point right there. Now there's something better. From DX Engineering, okay big supplier for amateur supplies and what they make and I, I still have this ring in place so I put this around it it's a square thing let me draw it looking down at the square thing um, it's square and it's not much bigger than this actually it's got an interior cutout and it's got holes lots and lots and lots of holes like this now you can guess that this is going to go down around the antenna so this is one of the very first things you're going to put in place when you put your antenna in place is this around the bottom this is called a ground plate or maybe better yet a radial plate 
Now, the thing that's special about this is that this piece of metal is made of stainless steel. Stainless steel and you use stainless steel bolts, nuts, washers, and lock washers with this. This is very important. You don't put aluminum on this thing. Now, stainless steel is not a... Sorry. Stainless steel is not a perfect anti-corrosion agent. But stainless steel is a heck of a lot cheaper than the other stuff. So what you're going to do is everywhere here, I'm just going to draw this from the top. Here is the bolt right here. Okay. And it's, you know, threaded and so on. And then you put a washer right there then you bring the ground in now on the ends of your uh, wires for your for your uh, radials you can get these down at an auto parts store little um, circle things that can be crimped although I would recommend soldering them I've got a hole in the middle and this goes here right there and then you've got another washer and it goes through the plate and you've got a washer and a nut down there. This way the copper stuff here never touches the aluminum plate. Now you can, since this is stainless steel, go ahead and bring them in but as a general rule if you want to keep the copper and this right up here is tinned copper. This way it only touches the stainless steel that's in these bolts and you can put this down through this hole here. Now to do 30 radials or so you're going to have to double up radials on here. So you might have uh, your bolt a little longer and like four of these shoved in together so that you have wires coming out like that okay and you'll stretch these wires out straight and and so on just like a good good radial business now I want to point out that stainless steel bolts are subject to something called galling uh, in other words, if you connect them together like this, uh, the stainless steel is fairly soft and it can push itself into it and be very, very difficult to uh, get off. So you can purchase um, an anti-galling or anti-seizure compound that's conductive that you can put in here on these nuts when you put them in so that they will not seize up if you ever uh, decide to move this around, do something, uh, change it out, uh, and so on. Now, even stainless steel is subject to corrosion, so you want to watch this fairly carefully. Now, one of these goes to the ground point on the antenna. Okay, that's how you get your ground. Now, in addition to that, on my vertical I've got an actual ground rod driven into the ground uh, um, Brad Rich N6GR actually put that in for me uh, right there so this is grounded uh, for lightning purposes the ground has nothing to do with the RF performance it's the radials that have to do with RF performance now there's the great conflict debate. Insulated or not insulated? Buried, not buried. Um, personally, I like insulated radials because then the voltage can flow in them, uh, which it does, 
um, the same time the voltage goes up in the um, antenna you're also getting voltage going out with the radials uh, I prefer insulated wire so that it doesn't you know dissipate heat in in the ground okay now this is all assuming that you're ground mounting your antenna um, if you're not ground mounting and if you're putting it up higher you can use a simple uh, oh, um, um, I'll think of it in a minute you can use a hose clamp around the grounding part and just put your wires in through here and clamp that down because you're only going to need two radials for each band and they won't be tuned the ground mounted radials are not tuned 20 or 25 feet is plenty long I prefer insulated laying on the ground now if you stretch these out you can get what are called lawn staples at uh, uh, Home Depot uh, they are pieces of wire about like that and what you do is if you want to hold the end of the radial down or any place in between just push a lawn staple over it if you get that down next to the ground within two or three years the grass and everything will have grown up above that radial and you won't even see it it will be like invisible but it's still laying there on the surface now I believe that the DX engineering uh, radial plate has a bend up here and I'll just sew it like, like it's laid out flat it's a hole big enough to put in a uh, threaded SO239 it's SO239 with threads in the middle and you put bolts on it so that you've got SO239 SO239 so your cable connects here and the outside of the cable is connected to the ground very well and then on the other side you put in a PL259 with just the center conductor and bring that up to the feed point of the antenna which is usually within inches of that and that's going to hold this thing very very stable and uh, give you very firm uh, connections again I'm going to mention this is available from DX engineering it's less than a hundred dollars for the plate uh, but you might want to they do not give you enough uh, hardware to go in every hole they give you enough to go about in every third hole so if you want you can buy extra hardware or um, you can go down to Home Depot at Home Depot sometimes a little hard to find stainless steel uh, hardware uh, you may have to go to a different kind of hardware store uh, fasten all there's a fasten all in Montrose where you can buy just about any kind of fastener and get yourself some bolts, nuts, washers, and so on to uh, do this all up with stainless steel, remembering the goop that you have to put on there. This is what I have on my um, antenna. I have the uh, Step IR, Big IR antenna, and this is what I use for the radial plate. And I do use this thing going in. Um, I don't use that. Scratch that part about this is what I use going in because I don't, I don't use that part right now. I go straight into the uh, antenna, which is then very securely connected to the radio plate. So this should answer your question, I think, on how exactly do I attach radials to a commercial vertical antenna. Love your channel. Uh, this radio plate is designed exactly for that. Uh, yeah, it's a hundred bucks. You can, if you want, bring all your radials together in one great big giant bundle and use your torch and just pour solder in there and then connect it that way. But then that's a little hard if you have to decide that you want to redo your radial system or something like that. So I would use the radial plate if you can. Uh, if you're only going to put in six or seven radials, um, 
yeah you can get by with something fairly simple but I'd go for about 20 or 30 radios get yourself a roll of THHN uh, single wire uh, stranded and be seven strands uh, from Home Depot like 14 gauge something like that it, it's 500 foot roll and if you cut that into 25 foot pieces you have five times four or 20 radials and it's less than a hundred dollars for that I know copper is expensive uh, but you can lay that out there and then with this radial plate you can add more radials later which I have done uh, to this I started out with about 20 and it's now got over 30 radials and the antenna works just great okay so there we go a little explanation of the radio plate and uh, here is a picture of what that radio plate looks like again we showed that earlier and uh, on the DX engineering webpage every so often you're gonna want to go out and slightly retighten these don't torque the living daylights out of this give it about you know 25 foot pounds or something like that which is about as much as you would do with a uh, spark plug or maybe just a little bit more you can break these bolts and then yeah you don't like it but they can be replaced freely this should give you a fairly corrosion free um, ground plane radial plane uh, for years to come it, this is this is a permanent installation okay so there you have it um, if you have watched this far I would encourage you to subscribe because you can get however YouTube notifies you of new videos um, and learn about new videos here also it's a signal to YouTube that you like what you see and if you like what you see you'd like others to see it too also if you would like to help this channel financially you may certainly do so by going to decastler.com support and looking at several different ways that are available there until we next meet, 73.